We've got to put some lines in the sand. And so, for instance, what's the big idea that if kids could nail by the first year or 18 months of schooling, if, if every teacher could really focus on that, and this you know, gets back to if you've only got kids attending school some of the time and the teachers are changing, what is it that's non-negotiable? What's non-negotiable by the end of that first year, 18 months, is what I call trusting the count. And it, it's to do with having really deeply understanding the numbers to 10 and having a sense of what happens after 10, perhaps knowing it doubles to 20, but it's having a, a really deep understanding of those numbers. So I've got a mental object of eight. So a principal, for instance, could walk around the playground and, you know, about the middle of year one, if, you know, Johnny, can you tell me what you know about eight? Eye to eye contact, if Johnny's had all these experiences, he should be able to say, oh yeah, eight is, it's one less than nine, it's two less than 10, it's a six and a two, it's a two and a six, it's a double four and so on. A whole lot of kids right now are not getting that deep, rich, they can read, write, make, count the number, yet tick off the curriculum. That's not what's needed. What's needed is this mental object for the numbers, line in the sand. So if everything else is going on, that's the non-negotiable. By the end of year two, if kids haven't really nailed the notion that 10 of these is one of those. Now it's not all of place value, but it is the absolute basis of the structure of our system and it's multiplicative. It's actually 10 of these is one of those. And they're not nailing all of it. They're not, not talking about decimals or anything. I'm just talking about that essential structure of the place value system. If they haven't nailed that by the end of year two, guess what? they're going to struggle with thousands and tens of thousands and any numbers larger because they're still going to be thinking in ones, non-negotiable. By the end of year four, if they haven't moved in their thinking about multiplication from a count of equal groups to really thinking about multiplication division in other ways, like three of anything, you know, double it and one more, four of anything, double, double. So it's, it's, it's thinking about multiplication as a factor, as three rows of four, three by four, rather than three groups of four, three fours. And if they haven't made that shift in thinking, so it's, again, it's not all of multiplicative thinking, it's just this key shift. There are other ideas for multiplication other than equal groups, and which is unfortunately embedded in the times table, which is why I'm not a great fan of the times table, because it is just reinforcing a count of equal groups. Of course, another non-negotiable is no child should leave primary school without confidence and strategies for the, all their number facts. Um, not, no excuse, but the way we're doing it at the moment is actually not helping a whole lot of kids do that. They're getting off to secondary school and they actually don't know, they don't know the times table. Um, because it, and then of course all that's doing is reinforcing equal groups. So they're not getting past that critical grade three, four hurdle. So that's, that's crucial. And then what is it by the end of primary school? Well, if that, it's another aspect of multiplicative thinking, but this is the idea of, if I understand that I can divide you know, things, things up into equal parts, and I've got some strategies for doing that, then I'm not going to understand fractions or decimals or percentage or ratio or anything else. And of course I'm doing fractions all the, you know, from, I'm sharing in, in first year of schooling, I'm understanding division and, what, and partitioning then, but this is when it becomes we can't accept it. It's non-negotiable after the end of year, you know, primary school, end of year eight. They need to be working with a, a more, much more sophisticated idea, which is proportional reasoning. Another aspect of, but we know from our data, we know from our data that this is what's responsible. And as I said, targeting these big ideas can lead to effect sizes of one, it's not rocket science. And then of course, by the end of year 10, it's the capacity to generalise. Now, of course, kids have been generalising all the way through and hopefully have had lots of opportunities to do that. This is when it becomes non-negotiable because if kids can't work with algebraic text, with relationships, with functions, with the way maths is written and can't generalise patterns and things, you know, they're setting themselves up for failure or we are setting them up for failure, more importantly, in further years. So it's not just about big ideas, it's about accountability. It's making teachers and schools responsible for ensuring kids have the opportunity to realistically succeed. It's no good expecting a year eight kid to jump through hoops if they haven't got the necessary, you know, infrastructure if you like. That poor year eight teacher is doing the best they can, but 
if they've had years where these things have been neglected. That's an issue of accountability and we can't afford that.